Hello and welcome to part 8 of the Johnny Blender 5 series with the little Jackie Blender, the little puppy dog. Uh, when last I left you we had uh, gone through and set up the fur um, and kind of modified it a little bit to look a little better. Um, and I, I know I promised that uh, this part 8, actually let me go ahead and save as part 8 here just so I don't accidentally overwrite part 7's source file. but. Um, I know I promised we'd get into rigging, but there's a couple of things I'd like to do before we do that. I apologize, but uh, I think we'll get some better results um, um, when we do what I would like to show you now. So, first of all, um, one thing I was thinking about, he'd look kind of cute with the with a collar around his neck. So let's go ahead and give him one of those. I'm gonna go ahead and shift A, and I'm going to add we're going to add a Taurus. There we go. And come over here to our settings, add torus. There we go. If I can get the window a little bigger. There we are. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on my. Well, let's get this set up first. Uh, it's going to turn on the screencast keys, but if I click outside of here, it's going to lock those settings in. I want to change them real quick. Um, let's uh, change the segments here. I like to put it at 12, or maybe 16. And then minor segments, same thing. Or it's already at 12. Let's go 6 there. It's going to be a flat collar, so um, actually let's make it 8. There we go. Okay, so that'll be fine for that. Now I can tab over here and turn on my display keys. There we go. Okay, so we got our collar set. Let's uh, modify it to where it's flat instead of a donut shape. So I'll tell you what, let's just move that over here to the side real quick. There we go. And we'll tab in here, select this vertex loop there in the center and I'm going to scale that up. Let's go to our top view so we can see it in action. Scale that up until it's pretty even with that next row and then we'll select the, both of those next rows there. Go ahead and scale those up until they're pretty close to that other one right there. And then we'll do the opposite on the other guy. Scale those down until they're about like so. So now we have a nice flat collar looking thing. Now, as you know, collars usually aren't just one circle. They typically are sort of a belt. So let's do that. Let's uh, grab these um, uh, vertices there. And if we hit Y, it'll separate those out. Actually, duplicated them and separated them. So uh, let's select these whole faces here and hit Y. And then I'll separate that out. And we can go and rotate it just a bit. And then grab these guys, rotate that, and then we'll come in here and uh, glue those back together. Alt M. I guess there could have been, I could have uh, added an extra loop in there and just, oops, unselect that one, and uh, just uh, cut a small part, but <laughs> more than one way to milk a duck. Okay, so we got that situated. Let's go ahead and close it off now. And we have eight vertices. Good. So we can grab that top one and the bottom one. Go ahead and hit F to create a face between them. And we'll go ahead and W subdivide that. And now we can add faces there and there and there and finally there. Okay, so let's do the same thing on the inside. There, F, W, subdivide. Oops. There we go. Okay, so now we have closed off edges. Okay, so now we'll get the face select. Select all those four edges there. Go to our top view and just move this down and then control, start bring it out. Maybe it's a little too big for him. He's just a puppy, so he got a lot of slack there. Go ahead and scale that down a bit, maybe. And let's extrude one more time and scale that one down so we have a nice tapered edge on there. Okay. And right here on the inside, let's just go ahead and kind of flatten that out. What's going on here? Got some too many vertices in there. So W, remove doubles. And I removed three different ones, so that should be good. No. Okay, well, let's select everything. W, uh, 
select everything W. Where is it at? Remove doubles. There we go. And it removed five more. So I guess uh, when I hit Y earlier, it went ahead and doubled that up again. So let's scale this on the Y axis, make it a little skinnier. Okay, so that's kind of roughly our collar. I would like to have smooth shading, of course. And let's go ahead and add a buckle on there real quick. I'm going to do that Shift A, and it's going to be a cube. And we'll scale that down a bit. Go ahead and subdivide it a couple of times. There we go. Scale it on the X axis. And then go to our side view, scale it on the Y axis. And then tell you what, let's just bring it out here so we can see it a little better. And let's make it a little curved, like so. And then curve it here as well. Scale on the Z axis. Okay, and let's go ahead and delete. Let's go to our side view. Delete the whole sides here, like so. We just want the the outer perimeter. So we'll go ahead and delete those faces, not the vertices, just the faces. And now we'll select this and hit E to extrude and then scale it down. Scale it on the Y axis a bit. And you can see it kind of made a nice little, not really a buckle per se, but the, uh, the uh, loop that the buckle would go through. So we can move that into place on the collar. Scale it down some, and then scale it to where it'll fit. About like so. That should be fine. And then I guess we can go ahead and create the buckle itself. So let's scale that on its Y axis. Let's rotate it so we can do it smoothly. There we go. Go ahead and Shift D, duplicate that over to about right here. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and put the little clasp that will come off of it to go into the belt hole, or the uh, the collar hole. Okay, tab into edit mode, and we're going to add a cylinder this time. And it has way too many vertices, so let's just give it, uh, let's give it just six. And we'll scale it way down, about like so, and then Add a few loops there around the middle, and there we go. Drag that out, and let's select Control L, select the whole thing, drag it out here, scale it down, maybe fatten it up a bit. If I can do the right direction, there we go. Okay, and now we'll rotate it in our front view. Let's actually give it some more curve. About like so. Okay. Then we'll drag it in here. And just as a placeholder, just put it in like that. Okay. So, in it's not the best looking buckle in the world, but <laughs> I think it'll probably work okay. It's just there for looks anyways. Let's drag that into where it's actually going into the belt, or the uh, collar there. There we go. I think that'll work. Okay, so now let's go ahead and set this shading to smooth again. And if we give it a subdivision surface, you can see that it looks a little bit better. So, okay. Now, the color I would like the color I would like to give him the collar is going to be red and then kind of a metallic look for the buckle and everything. So, so uh, go over here and create a new material for that. And instead of trying to map it out, I'm just going to give it two separate materials. So, we'll call this one collar underscore red and then let's create another one, call this one collar metal. Okay, and under the red one, really not much we need to do. Actually, we could make it a little shiny, so let's give it, um, well, we'll give it a mix shader. If we can do that, let's see if we can do it here. Yes, let's set the mix, the first one to glossy. There it is, white gloss, that's correct. You don't have to do everything over in the node editor, by the way. You can do it like I'm doing it right here. Um, and then diffuse BSDF, and we want it to be darkish burgundy almost 
just a dark red. About like so. And we want the shader. We'll do the preview. Get an idea what it's going to look like. Right now it's way too shiny. So let's open up the glossy. And set the roughness to... Uh, let's try point 0.5. Okay. We'll minimize that and set the, the factor of the mix to be mostly red. We would just want a little bit of that gloss on there. So, Okay. Looks like I need to go the opposite way. 0.7. Maybe a little more glossy. Let's try 0.3. Okay, and then try 0.9 on the mix. And there we go. Kind of a nice leathery looking red. So there we go. And then the metal. That just needs to be a glossy. And it's pretty much perfect as is. It's a little too shiny though, so I'd like to rough it up a little bit. Let's go 0.2. And that should work. Okay. And okay, now we need to make sure we assign the correct colors to the correct parts of the model. So we'll go ahead and assign the color red to the color part. And then we'll select the inverse and assign the color metal. So there we go. Okay, so now we can put this on his neck. Of course, we'll need to scale it down. Like so. And move it a little bit further over like so. Okay, so there we go. Now he's got him a collar. Now, uh, what I was talking about before, uh, something that will save us a little bit of time, is let me show you a couple of things. Um, let's see. Where's my render setting here? Now, I rendered out uh, Jackie here with uh, some different settings. Therefore, uh, more fur and then a lot more samples uh, so it would render better. And it, I guess it looks okay. But as you know, the, uh, the, the fur in Cycles is still being developed. That's why it's still an experimental set that we had to look for and change earlier. So I decided I thought I would check out and see how I could get it to look in the Blender internal. So I, that's what I did there. And I think this looks quite a bit better. I mean, they both look okay. If you want to stick with cycles, you go right ahead. But from now on, I'm going to move over into the internal. And I'll show you how to switch all the, the uh, materials and everything to work internally rather than in cycles. So uh, if you want to stick with this, feel free. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead, like I said, and go into the internal. And we're going to get a, a much softer look to the fur. And it'll render a lot faster. Because this image uh, took 22 minutes to render. 22 Point, 22 minutes and 4 seconds, if I recall correctly. And I'm not a patient man, so that takes way too long. If I'm going to do an animation, that's that's way too long. Way too long. So this guy, this one only took a minute and 24 seconds. 22 seconds. A minute and 22 seconds. So it's like 1 20th, you know, the length of time, almost. So, yeah. I'm going to jump over into the internal, and then after we get that set up, Everything else should be about the same as far as the rigging and everything. So, um, Okay, so I'll go ahead and save this as part 8. And then just because we're jumping into a different thing, I'll go ahead and save this as 8B. And we're going to switch from Cycles Render to back to Blender Render. And that's the internal. Now, you'll notice all of the materials will now have, like, they're transparent. They're, they got the Z, Z transparency, essentially. If we were to render right now... We wouldn't really see anything. Let me pause recording because this might take a little bit. Okay, as you can see, it's it's not rendering anything. That's because all the materials are designated to be cycles. And we're in Blender internal now, so there's nothing to render. So we have to convert all of the materials to be visible in the internal. So we'll go ahead and start with the collar since that's already selected. And let's go up and select the red one. And the way to switch that to the internal is just click the little use shader nodes. Just uncheck that. Right, It's selected if you're from Cycles. We click that to unselect it. And it'll make that back to the standard white. So all we got to do is just change that back to the red we were wanting. Like so. Maybe a little bit more purplish color. There we go. And then we can change the specular right here. I personally, as I'm sure you're all aware, I kind of prefer 
the internal renderer just just because the materials are so much easier to set up but uh, the only problem I have with internal is the uh, uh, the lighting setup for especially for fur because you have to use uh, a spotlight with buffered shadows and and that can get to be a, a pain in the neck so um, okay so let's make this a little more shiny there we go so set it to about this, this soft violet red color set the intensity all the way up and then an intensity of uh, the specular intensity of 0 0.2 and the hardness of 30 so get a, a sort of a, a nice plasticky rubbery texture okay now the color metal same thing turn that guy off and this time we're gonna come down here to mirror and check that and let's set the reflectivity about to 0 0.25 We'll come, let's collapse, collapse some of these guys so we can kind of see what we're doing. And that gives it, it's not quite a metallic look, but we can change some of the specular settings here and also change the color to be a bit more of a grayish tone. Set the intensity up. And it's already looking more metallic. But one thing I found to make it really look metallic is, you know, most things you think, most metallic things are really shiny, but I found one way to make it look more metallic is to actually lower the specular actually set the intensity up a little higher maybe leave that at 0.5 but set the hardness way down and that kinda to me that looks a little more metallic especially if you wanted to add a little bit of a rough texture to it kind of a hammered steel type of thing I don't know but uh, maybe even a little more intense let's try 0.75 so okay well, that'll work for now. We'll, we'll see what it looks like once we render. But okay, so let's go ahead and select Jackie himself. And same thing, go ahead and come up here and select. Uh, let's start with his normal body material. Go ahead and turn that guy off. And now we'll jump over to the textures. And right now, it's got a texture set to it, but it says it's, it's not set to anything. So we need to make sure it says image or movie. Scroll down here to the image settings, and we just click the little thumbnail. It's already loaded into Blender in this scene, so we'll just click that, and then go ahead and collapse that, and make sure under mapping you say UV. Okay, go ahead and collapse that, and right now we only want it to be set to the color. So there we go. There's that one. Jump back to the materials. Go ahead and select the fur material. Go ahead and turn that off. Same thing. Right now, since uh, it was the same texture settings, as the other material. It went ahead and duplicated that over, but we still need to make sure we go to UV and everything else should be good to go. But also on the fur, since we're in internal now, remember on uh, in cycles we added that uh, factor to set the strands of fur to go from solid to fade out. So the way we do that in the internal is we just add a new uh, texture there and change it from clouds to blend and then scroll down here to the colors of the blend click ramp turn that on and right now it's gonna go from left to right that's how it's gonna know how to fade the, basically the left side will be the root and the right side will be the tip so we need to go ahead and make that right side black so right now it's fading from transparent to black so that would be kinda of the opposite of what we're looking for so let's drag this black all the way back then drag that transparent all the way to that side but um, we need to go ahead and lower the transparency of the solid black a little bit. Let's put that at 0.5. Now we'll have a nice somewhat transparent fur all around. That'll give it a really nice soft look. Okay, so now uh, we need to tell this blend, if we turn show alpha on, we can kind of get an idea. It's kind of hard to see there, but if you move that around you can kind of see it moving. It's real hard to see, but it, it's there. Don't worry. Okay, so we'll collapse that and we need to tell that blend, we don't want it to influence the color, we want it to influence the alpha. So we're going to check the alpha right there. Now we'll go back to our materials and come down here under transparency, go ahead and check that and since we're controlling the transparency with that blend file, we'll just set this alpha all the way to zero and you can see it's uh, fading from the left to the right. So we need to tell the also tell the uh, this alpha to map to strands and particles. So that way if we turn on our particle preview right there you can kinda see it um, visible at the bottom and it fades out towards the top. 
And another thing we need to do to make that fur look the way we want is right here under strand settings. Right now, just like we did in cycles, the root and the tip size makes a difference in how it looks. So right now the root is set to one and the tip is set to one. So it's basically gonna be a cylinder, just a straight cylinder. So we want it to taper out. So let's set the root all the way down as far as it'll go, which is 0.25. And then the root, let's make that a little bigger. Let's make that 1.5. And we'll go ahead and save this. So now, um, our materials, well, we need to set up the eye, but before we do that, let's go ahead and jump over to our particle settings and make sure we tell both of these particle settings to now use the second material. I think they were using the first one before, so we'll go down to the render settings. There we go. Okay, that one's using the correct one and that one. Okay, for some reason I thought they were shuffled around, but in any case, so that's good to go. Now we just need to do the eyeballs, and I think they're hidden right now, so I'll hit Alt-H, there they are. Go and select that eyeball, and go to our Materials tab, and do the same thing we did on everything else. Um, turn off the no nodes information, come down, or go over to our textures, and go ahead and say, I guess it's not loaded in there, so we'll just say New Texture, go to Image or Movie, and under image, now we can click the thumbnail and say Jackie eyeball.jpg. There we go. And make sure it is mapped to the UV and set to the color. Now, there's one other thing I would like to do so that we can have the eyeball be shiny on the white part, but not shiny on the iris part. And the way we can do that is if we say tab into edit mode and select everything there, make sure this window goes back to UV image editor and right now it has the render result in there so just in, delete, uh, clear that out and then we'll load in the eyeball so what I want to do is well first of all I want to clean up the edges there because you can see it's kind of bleeding out throughout or bleeding out and missing some of the UV coordinates so let's jump excuse me let's jump into um, <clears throat> the uh, paint mode just like we did before hit N to bring up our toolbox and let's bring it all the way to white and just make sure we get all of that so we don't have any seams on our material so just go ahead and paint that and now we'll just go ahead and bring this menu over image save image so now that's saved that Okay, now, I want to use this same image to control the specular, but uh, I want the white to be shiny, but everything else I don't want shiny at all. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and paint black, black all over the iris right there. Okay, and I'm going to save this as, I did this already earlier, Jackie Eyeball Specular, Jackie Eyeball Spec. So we'll save that. And now, we'll tab out here, and we'll come over here and make sure that Jackie Eyeball, refresh that so it gets the brown back on there, and then we'll add another material right there, or add another texture, uh, and this is going to be Imager Movie also, and this one's going to be, uh, I guess I need to open that specular, there we go, and then make sure this one's mapped to the UVs, collapse that. And we don't want this one on the color. We want this one on the specular specular color. There we go. Not the. You could use it on intensity and hardness if you like, but I like to control that from the actual material settings. So that's going to control the color of the specular. So if we go to both, you can kind of see the black is not shiny at all, but the white is. And that's the way we want it. So if we go back to materials, let's change the specular to Ward ISO. Yeah, it gives us a nice, strong reflection there. And let's set the slope down to, let's try 0.05. So it would be a nice, shiny, uh, small glimmer, which makes it look shinier. Okay, so now we'll do the lens. Go ahead and click that. And this is going to be kind of like the metal on the collar, but instead of mirror, it's going to be transparency. Let's go ahead and collapse that mirror. And uh, we don't want Z transparency, we want ray trace. So go ahead and turn that on. 
and bump the IOR, the index of refraction, up to about 1.2, and then obviously set the alpha all the way down to zero. And then we'll do the same thing on the specular that we did on the, the uh, if I can make this smaller, there we go. I accidentally clicked that, there we go. Um, set the specular to be the same settings as uh, as on the eyeballs themselves. So we got 0.5 and 0 0.05. So there we go, change that toward ISO. 0 0.5 is good, 0 0.05. Okay, now go ahead and save. Now there's one more thing we need to do to make this render nicely. Well, a couple of more things actually, but uh, the first thing, um, in order to be able to see the brown irises behind the transparent lens is to make sure that it is able to accept transparency, shadows being thrown through transparency. So go ahead and turn that on, receive transparent. So let's collapse some of these guys so we don't have to scroll so far. There we go. And let's go ahead and do the same thing on the on the lens. Collapse that, receive transparent. And then we'll also need to do that on, since we have the transparency for the fur, we'll need to make sure that it can cast transparent shadows on itself, on each individual hair particle, can cast a transparent shadow on the next hair particle that's next to it. And then also the main underlying body can receive transparent shadows. There we go. And tell you what, while we're at it, let's make that underlying body a lot less shiny. Set the intensity, let's make 0.2 and maybe the hardness 20. Okay, so there we go. I think we are ready to render now. Um, yeah, let's give them, well, nope, there's one thing we need to do on the lamp. Change that from a sunlight to a spotlight. Remember, I think when we were setting this up in cycles before, I mentioned how uh, you have to be inside the cone of the spotlight for it to actually light up. And one default setting of a spotlight is it's set to inverse square. We need to change that to inverse linear so it lights up a little brighter. And we can also change the energy to 1.5, it's a little brighter. And I think we still have, no, turn on ambient occlusion over in your world settings. Set the factor to about 0.2. That gives just enough light on the shadow side, essentially, to, to make it so it's not such a harsh, bright shadow. Okay, now, one last thing on the lamp to do to make the fur look good is to change uh, the shadowing to buffer shadows. And then on the bias right there, let's set that to about 0.35. That'll give us some better shadows there amongst the hair particles. Okay, so now, go ahead and save one last time, and we'll render it out. And you can see if you think it looks better uh, than cycles. So, um... I can go ahead and let that render out here. I'll go ahead and pause recording so it doesn't take quite as long to render. So be right back. Okay, and here we are. It just only took 33 seconds for this. So it rendered a lot faster, but it doesn't necessarily look better. And that is, we need to change the specular on the hair itself. And then uh, <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> I went from. I actually spent a lot of time working on the fur, getting it looking better, and then in this part 8 I just continued from part 7 instead of part 7b that I had saved the new fur to. So, um, In any case, that's how you get that set up. Let's go ahead and, and change the specular on the fur itself. Um, set the hardness to about 60 and the intensity to about 0.15. And if we render again, go ahead and pause. Okay, so you can see that the hair looks quite a bit better now. It's got kind of a nice soft sheen to it rather than that harsh glare, that uh, shininess. So, um, like I said, I, went, I had gone in and spent time um, cleaning up the hair and things like that. So I'll tell you what, let me go ahead and open that particular file. Let me save this one. And that's going to, that was 7C, I believe. So now, um, that was actually the the image I showed you before, this one here, this from 7C. You can see that I cleaned up the hair quite a bit. Now, one real quick trick that I did to help out with the hair, the fur, is I remember I went ahead and went in, if 
it'll let me tab in. There we go. I added one more loop here around each eye, just for helping uh, with the fall off of the hair particles. And then I also adjusted the weights of the vertex group. Instead of just being a solid, span this window out. Instead of just being a solid, everything red or blue, I went ahead and made it have a nice, great, gradual transition between each one. See, the blue is where there's no fur for that particular, for the face, and the green is fades 50% from blue to red. So you can see that the eyes don't have any, but as they start coming out onto the face, it, it blends in until it's solid. So um, you can play with that if you like. So that being said, I'll go ahead and save this as 8C, just for convenience sake there. Um, so we'll call this, uh, we'll call the, the little puppy dog, actually I guess I need to bring in the, the collar, which it can easily do. Just go ahead and append from 7C, actually I guess it was 8B, wasn't it? And uh, the mesh, actually object, there we go. And it's going to be Taurus, we never did rename it to collar, so it's still Taurus. So we'll go ahead and link, append that from the library, puts it right there where we need it, and it goes ahead and brings in those materials that we applied to it as well. So now, if I go ahead and save this as 8C, let's move our camera down a little bit so we can see that collar a little better. And one thing I like to do for the camera is add an empty. So I'll just put the 3D cursor right somewhere in there and go uh, Shift A, add. I guess my. When you open and close scenes and literally it turns, <laughs> it turns the. Uh, the uh, screencast keys off, but I just hit Shift A to open the Add menu and empty plane axis will be fine. Then we're going to grab the camera, Shift select that empty, and go Control T and track to the constraint. So now, when I move this empty around, the camera points directly at it. So we'll have it point down a little bit right there, closer to his neck. And then if we look through our camera and we grab the border of it, we can drag it around, drag it down. And if you hit G and just click your middle mouse wheel, you can zoom out and maybe adjust where it's pointing again, like so. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save that. And okay, huh. one final thing before we render this final image there is I think it's already applied to this being the one that I played with. But uh, one thing I added to the the eyeballs was some reflectivity. So they they actually mirror. Point 0.1. So just come on down here and turn on the mirror and put the re reflectivity at point 0.1 on the eyeballs and then also on the lens. You can kind of see it reflecting the the uh, grid, the uh, checker pattern there. So just point 0.1 is plenty. So go ahead and save this and I'll hit render. Go ahead and pause recording and be right back when that's done. Okay, and now it's done rendering. You can see that slight reflection there on the eyes kind of helps bring those to life a little bit. Um, and the fur is a lot softer and it looks a lot better and the collar looks pretty good. So there's our finished modeled textured and furred out little Jackie puppy dog. So um, that's going to be it for part eight, I believe we're in part eight. Yes. And uh, when we get into part nine, we'll go ahead and rig him real quick and uh, and maybe do a little bit of animation. So uh, that's going to be it for part eight. As I said, thank you for watching. And uh, I'll see you in part nine.